She tips the scales about 8,090 pounds, big living room super slide on the door side, and amazing bath and a half private bunk room in the back. The 326BHDS Freedom Express here at Aylid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And I'm going to give her a name, uh, even though I'm calling it her, which is awkward. I think, why do we, we always call cars campers, we call them hers. Anyway, uh, I'm going to call her <laughs> B.A. Baracus, like our favorite mohawked hero from the hit A-Team series. And I'm gonna do so because this thing is rather BA, in my opinion, if you are picking up what I'm putting down right there. It has a laundry list of personal favorite features. I'm not gonna lie, uh, Freedom Express is absolutely a brand I personally really like. Like outside of my professional interest in this RV, I like what this brand does. The features, the, the qualities, they bring to the table, like the wide stance axles to give me a smoother towing experience, a heated belly, a taller ceiling, and a true queen bed with an amazing easy lift storage down below. Uh, this one also brings Asdell to the table. And again, a bath and a half model means everybody has their own private space to, you know, like use the potty at night so that we're not tracking across the whole camper. Not to mention the fact that this one, although shaped in a rather uncommon fashion, it puts that big super slide with all those windows over here on the door side of the RV so you can keep an eye on your campsite instead of only looking at the neighbors. Now I try to provide reasonable towing expectations coming into this and if you appreciate that definitely click that little subscribe button and follow along because we always try to shoot you straight. Um, there's going to be some people out there that go, oh it's half ton towable and they stop talking. Please be cautious of those kind of folks because the, the camper at 8,090 pounds as this one weighs now it could be anywhere from 8 to 81 depending on the options put onto it like a second air will add some weight. Um, yes, that could fit within the realm of half ton towability, but this trailer is long and that is a harder thing for a common class half ton to handle. A, a very heavy duty half ton that I call a two third ton will probably handle it, but those wide stance axles right there, those tires that I was zooming in on, those will help you basically cheat the wheelbase and will make the trailer feel like it's a little bit shorter when you're towing it. So that being said, if you're not sure if your truck can handle it, please just call our team. Give us a chance to do our job. We'll crack open the tow guides. We'll give you what we've seen from our experience and then also get to know you a little bit so that we can have an idea of like, hey, is this going to be the right one for you or not? Because the last thing we want is you being white knuckled and terrified of going camping. We want you going out and having a good time and telling other folks, man, those folks at Halo RV sure shot me straight. I appreciate that. Now, this is certainly an unconventional floor plan, which is probably why it speaks to me so nicely. I've been described as an unconventional person. Uh, not in so many words, actually. Most people refer to me as just flipping weird, and I, I'm okay with that. But there's things about this one that really speak to me. Like, I like the taller ceiling. More uh, lighter weight trailers have a six and a half foot ceiling. This is six nine, and you're gonna see that translates to some nice headroom in the uh, shower. We've got ourselves that larger 15,000 BTU air conditioner option, which is what we pretty much always apply to the Liberties here at Haylit RV. And you can see right there, we're looking at the bigger 12 volt DC compressor fridge. That'll give us more cold storage capacity. It cools faster. It is safe to use in transit. And this one, it's a bunk model that has a good entertainment center. And that is something that the RV industry often very much does not do well. Now, every RV is built with a different purpose. Some are not built with the idea of watching TV when you're going camping. This is a more upscale trailer. This is a trailer you're going to spend some more time in. So they figure, eh, you probably want to do that. That TV does pivot, by the way. I have it flush mounted right now, but it can pivot around. Liberty Edition has a standard electric space heating fireplace. The Ultralight series is finally starting to get an optional fireplace and standard in some limited models like the 252 RBS. And since it is a little weird, they had to get a little creative with the storage. Like the pantry is actually over here. But I actually kind of like that because that means it's right next to the, <laughs> the recliners. So when it is bago chippo 30, I got a uh, easy up down kind of situation. Now just to give you an idea, these are this is an optional piece of equipment. We've upgraded this one to the theater seating, which is wall hugging by the way, and it, it reclines very nicely if you want to take a little midday nap. Now even with long legs like mine, if I'm reclined, people can still come and go into that uh, private rear bunk room, bedroom, second living room, whatever you want to call it. And just because this RV layout is a little different, let's go ahead and finish up the rest of this space here. You will see that you've got sealed edge counters through most of the RV. But when we get into the kitchen, 
you will actually swap over to Solid Surface. That is a Liberty Edition uh, kind of specialty feature right there. Couple things on the dining area though. First of all, I want to fold that down so you can see it in sleeper mode. And then secondly, this uh, in the Liberty series, instead of just doors, you get full on big time extension drawers below the dinette. And notice how it's got those little accent lights at the base. Those are, ooh, ooh, I'm, I'm running into stuff over here. I accidentally just shut the storage door under the fireplace with my leg. Pardon me, scared the crap out of myself. I hope the camera didn't jump. I jumped like a little girl. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Carpetless, ventless flooring, easy, easy cleaning. Oh, by the way, the air conditioning that we talked about, all of the vents can turn and close individually if need be. Jayco's good about that too. Now, all the cabinetry is going to be pocket screwed, and as you're going to see, they have hidden hinges uh, to help keep the cabinet doors closed in transit. They don't like to bounce themselves open, and if they do bounce open, they try to close themselves. And although Freedom Express is a really popular brand, personally, I don't think they get the credit they deserve because they do a lot of little things like this just to make sure that your RV doesn't get dinged and bashed up. They put that little kind of safety chain right there so that this door handle doesn't go cracking into that glass over there. It is, it, they, they do the little window shade string anchors so that you don't have a dangly string all over the place near a fire source, which is the number one place you don't want flammable things, so they keep it out of the way. You know, they're doing a split sink cover that is an easy feature to overlook. And then little stuff like this. Like, you look down, you're like, oh, cool, yeah, nice drawers. They got a sponge drawer. What I see with my experience, though, is I looked at this, and I went, holy crap. They are not just using, like, a cheap plastic sponge drawer that anybody could use. They are purpose-building this with thick, heavy-duty materials. It is, it's like, it's overbuilt, frankly. And there's a lot of those little details that I see in this brand, guys. This Freedom Express is a brand that if I were buying a trailer today, they're, whether it's a couples model or a bunk camper, if I were in the market today, they would be on my personal list. This is absolutely what I call a nerd preferred brand of campers. Just to get you a look at everything else, I, I want to make sure you don't miss uh, you know, a little nook or cranny here. This actually does, uh, built into the countertop, have a dedicated knife holder set of slots. Now, sometimes you'll see slots like that behind the stovetop. Sometimes those are vents. Those are not knife holders. Uh, it's really important that you kind of know the difference between the two. Coming back here to this very private slide-out bunk room, living room, bath and a half guest space, whatever you want to call this little beach cabana house back here. It's going to get the job done. We can flip those bunks down. It's got a gas strut to make that easy lifting. And here's another cool thing. Notice that uh, sleeper sofa actually has support legs. It's not a jackknife sofa. The back rolls over to the front. So if you have a large kid, a big adult, it is actually built to handle the weight of a larger person like that. Um, oh, you probably want to see the storage below that thing, too. That's another cool thing this is doing. Instead of just, like, some cushion pads, it's a real couch with real storage below it. Now, storage as a whole is something I think Coachman is one of the best about, especially when it comes to the bunk room. The amount of storage back here is just phenomenal. Real quick mention, that is an egress uh, uh, ventilating window there, and it does have its own pull-down roller shade. That is also what I like to call a big kid bunk. It's a little bit larger, so you don't have to heave ho the kiddos. Nobody wants to do that. Sounds like a part. Heave ho the kiddo song. No, I'm done. Uh, nope, nope, we're not going to do that today, Josh. <laughs> hey, now, this isn't... Uh, oh, this compared to last year. I don't know if you're familiar with this floor plan last year. It looked very similar to this. It didn't look very different. And in years past, the, sometimes they had a flimsy little wooden dowel ladder. Previously, for a couple seasons, they had like this rock climber wall. It was really cute, but frankly, it uh, kind of hurt your feet. So now they are including a removable, sturdy ladder. Now, when you're uh, here's an RV pro tip for you. When you're traveling, lift the mattress up and put the ladder under that so you don't have to worry about where it's going to store or vibrate around to. But how great is this? The kiddos can come and go all day. The only reason it's removable is so the slide out can close and not smash and crash it up. If you feel like it, like I said, this could be second living room space. You do have TV hookups there. And again, I want to show you all the storage capacity in here. Dedicated closet space, dresser space, more dresser space, more dresser space, shoe garage. It's 
got a lot going on. And apparently I didn't get this door shut all the way, and it kind of cracked open. And once again, I just scared the crap out of myself. I thought Casper the Ghost was coming in here to murder me or something. Anyway, bunks are 300 pound rated, by the way, in case you're curious. And some USP bugs there for the kiddos. So on a rainy day, the big kids in the upper beds here, they can keep themselves occupied. Whatever. Pac-Man whiz-bang video games that they got at the time. Back in my day, we just kicked a rock and we loved it. Kicking rocks was fun. I'm sorry, I don't know where I'm going with this. The door handle locks so that we don't have, Mom, Billy's peeking at me or whatever weirdness. And you'll see the same thing up in the master bathroom too. What else you'll also see in the master bathroom is porcelain. Both toilets in this are porcelain foot flush and Pretty good legroom here. I was able to fit in that thing pretty comfortably. There is a little kind of laundry hamper back behind the toilet. You can easily pull out of there if need be. You'll find yet another of those in the master bedroom. And that is what I like about this. If you're noticing, this is, other than just not having a shower, it's basically treated exactly like a master bath. By the way, before we jump up front, if you appreciate things like that little ladder right there, leave a comment thanking Freedom Express down in this video. I'll get it relayed to them. I'll send them a link to this video so they can see it. Because they were really not sure about doing stuff like that. The bean counter lawyers were all, well, what if somebody falls off and are we liable for it? Blah, blah, blah now. And they said, you know what? People want this. We're going to put it in. So make sure they know that you you agree that they're doing the right job. I guess if if you agree. Do you agree? Do you like this compared to the rock climber wall? What do you think? I'm over here just assuming, I guess. Am I right? Couple quick notes on a few things as we are working our way up front. Uh, slide side breeze window so you can keep the air moving. And how about, I don't care what direction someone's coming from, if uh, they're knocking on your door, you can look over here. You can be like, oh no, it's Uncle Gary. Everybody be quiet, act like we're not here. Or you can peek out the main window and it's awesome that you can get more light that way. The uh, bathroom here works for me it works very well for me once again porcelain foot flush stool with plenty of leg room and with this rv being taller it means we also have a taller shower that is yet another thing i love about freedom express is they fit me as a tall bulbous belly long-legged lanky dude which you know that's a weird combination of factors i guess my wife likes them different i don't know but I can fit in here. Now, this is another Liberty Edition feature. You get the larger fantastic vent fan here, and they are actually using a thermostatic variety, which is the reason the bathroom door actually is slotted at the top a little bit. It doesn't go all the way to the ceiling. That means that you can keep the bathroom door shut. You can set that fan to start exhausting heat if it gets a little too warm or whatever, and it will do so auto-magically without any sort of real effort required on your part. Now over here, this is actually something I suggested to Freedom Express a few seasons ago, and it's gone over like gangbusters. Instead of a just like massive like two-person size shower that was nice, but you didn't need it that big, they opened that up and put some storage space right there. So you actually got places for like towels, linens. Uh, it, it does pass through into the bedroom, so you could use it in a half and half kind of capacity. Sealed edge counters in here, just like the rest of the camper. And then nice space down here. I don't care if what you need is a place for like to stack up toilet paper, or if you need a place for uh, like toiletries or anything like that, or a wastebasket. Yes, I did. Oh, that is absolutely something more campers need to do is be wastebasket friendly like this one. And I've mentioned it a few times, but up front here, we have ourselves a sliding pocket privacy door and a 60 by 80 true queen bed. Uh, that is something that can sometimes be hard to find in a lot of campers. Freedom Express does it pretty much standard on like every single model, some even coming with kings. Again, they're great about storage. You have a full overhead cabinet space here. And that windshield up front just lets in a flood of light. And this bedroom is not exceptionally large, but it feels a lot bigger because you have these opposing breeze windows, which also still have roller shades. Then you've got that big front windshield, which has a night privacy shade since a roller shade would flop down and bang you on the head. Now, if you're looking, it's going, hey, pay attention. Check us out. We've got a really cool thing going on under our bed. And uh, if you haven't seen it before, you are in for a treat because this thing is awesome. Because Freedom says, move, bed, get out the way. Get out the way, bed, get out the way. This thing, it just, it's on these gas struts. It is fully finished. It is so clean. You can see the aluminum construction going on in that bed base. This is all a custom design that they came up with here. Um, there are some other campers I've seen with a similar concept. And what you can do here is pretty much anything you want. Like, you can sit 
on these benches. You could sit a laundry basket across from you. You can fold some laundry and organize it over here before you figure out how it's all going to get put away. And if you look down inside here, you've got the perfect little pet palace that pets can come and go, or you can just throw a sliding tote under there or a shoe garage. But the other versions of things like this, I've seen the drawers open inward. So you have to lift the bed. And it's nice that you can, but it's dumb that you have to. So Freedom Express says, don't worry, we got you. So they put dresser drawers on both sides of it. So you can always get to your dresser storage without needing to lift the bed, which is cool because that means that basically you can get to all the storage like those hanging closets uh, much simpler and easier. I feel like an infomercial, but wait, there's more! Because you see full overhead storage above, like I mentioned. But as we twist around the corner, remember how the bedroom and the bathroom shared some storage space? And this is the kind of extra bedroom dresser space that, you know, for a big trailer like this, you, you really want. Because this is probably something you can use for an extended time. And just like in the half bath, they have a laundry hamper up here so that you have a place for yesterday's clothes now that it's today. And what's really smart is, remember, this over here is actually the door. The, the storage door from the bathroom side. It does pass through. And this right here is a handy little lid to the laundry hamper. So you can access this from the bathroom or the bedroom, which is really handy because those are the two places you're probably most likely to change clothes. So what about traveling access? If we walk in here, take a dog leg right, obviously we can get to the master bedroom. The master bathroom is right across from us. And if we turn to the left, we can see a big fat slide out wall. <laughs> And I hope you appreciate the fact that we show our RVs with the slides closed. If you do, hit subscribe because our goal is always to give you the most information. This one is absolutely awesome for a destination, but it's it's that's certainly its best application. I don't know that this is the best RV for travel stops, although this is the type of slide out that you could partially open. That being said, I don't think you want to do that constantly. Not because I'm a worried about... I'm a, wor I'm a worried. I've turned into Mario over here. I'm not worried about the slide failing or anything. It's just, I don't think you want to do that. But I guess that's an issue of personal preference, isn't it? And I finally remembered to get some footage of this pass-through with the battery still turned on so you can see what is basically like a light under the awning but here in the pass-through compartment, which gives you a uh, you know nice amount of visibility in what you're doing. You can see that aluminum skeleton. We kind of peeked that under the bed, but up here, this is a more recent update. I, I tell you what, it's been well received and I sure like it. Uh, these have come with an outdoor picnic table for a couple seasons, but they just kind of like buckle strapped to the top of that compartment. They were kind of hard to put back in place. And you can see how Freedom Express has improved that. They put a like basically a mounting bracket there. So it's just easy slide in, easy slide out. Now, speaking of slide outs, ooh, hell, I couldn't have done that if I tried. Uh, this big door side slide out does potentially come with one disadvantage, but Freedom Express fixed it. It would chop your awning in half. You'd only have that tiny awning in the front. So they mounted another super slide awning right onto the face of this sucker so that you can have a lot of patio space. Now this is uh, a model that is only available in the Liberty Edition Freedom Express. If you're not familiar with that, you find a lot of the Freedom Express selects and ultralights here. The Liberty Edition is basically the top of the class. It's the LX series. This is where they pull out all the stops. We get things like that awesome looking full nose cap. We also have a uh, five point uh, full power stabilizer system basically. And it is all operated right here on the tongue. You can come up here, you can pick which uh, jack you want to operate, push the button, and here's the thing that you can't see from just this video. It moves fast. It moves really fast, which is nice, so that you spend more time camping and less time setting up. Liberty Edition is also giving us uh, sleek frameless windows, which is something people sometimes go, why don't they have frameless windows on the rest of the Freedom Expresses? And the answer is because they, uh, um, oh, I'm, I'm skipping some stuff. I'm trying to move fast here because I'm cold. But um, the, the ultralights tend to be used off grid. These tend to be used part camping a little more. Tongue mounted spare tire keeps the rear bumper open uh, for accessories if you want to add those. Uh, battery disconnect keeps parasitic phantom load from draining our batteries when we are all done. And just the little details, we've got uh, compression slam latches. We have sealed hinges on these doors. They're magnet held back and they are being overlooked by our buddy, Pete the dog. This also has something that I think almost any two bathroom camper should have. And that is two black tank flushes. And it is frustrating 
how many of these campers do not have that? Like, you've got one back here for the rear bathroom, then you have one near the front for the front bathroom. Makes a lot of sense. When they're closer to the bathroom, they work better. And it is boggling to me how many RVs have a bath and a half or two bathrooms and only one black tank flush. It's about as smart as my Uncle Gary trying to retire off of scratch-off tickets, but enough about him. So they changed their outside cooking setup compared to the previous years. Uh, they have gone to these handy little griddle stations over here, and hey, wouldn't you know it, they're including the handy uh, Suburban griddle right for you. Now there's going to be a little propane cooker hooker-upper down there, so you can, if you don't want this griddle, if you want to do a Blackstone, you can. It can hook up to any sort of outside camper sort of thing. And I love that little utility shelf, and notice how this is the same sealed counter stuff that we saw through the majority of the RV. But I do want to take a second to really dial in on a few things. First of all, I mentioned briefly the frameless windows that come on the Liberty Edition look hashtag smexy. But over here on the slide end walls, we have sliding windows for maximum airflow. And that also makes sure that if you accidentally leave the window open, because those windows tilt open and then close the slide, you're not going <laughs> to smash that, smash that window pane up. Anyway, uh, you can see how the uh, slide end wall here is uh, really rough textured, and I'm pulling my glove off here with my teeth, give me just a moment. And you can see how they are also using a very unconventional T-shaped wiper seal. They're actually using two of them, and a bulb seal on the inside and outside. So you have three points of contact. This is giving us better function because it's grabbing the slide seal better. That T-shape right there is also giving more surface area to grab onto. The whole idea being Let's keep the water out of the camper, shall we? And they're doing a great job over here. And a full-size camp kitchen. Is it just me? Or has it become increasingly hard to find a full-size camp kitchen in an RV? Now, pardon my uh, dual-layer mitten glove over there. Um, I haven't put that back on, so now my hand's freezing. But neither here nor there. This is actually something like, if you're like, yeah, I don't want that. I need one extra bonus bunk. Look up on our website or our channel a 34 TSB Cougar because they will have uh, the Low Pro Camp Kitchen and a fourth bed on the inside. So, little shades between. Or if you've looked at the Cougar and you're like, I want the big camp kitchen, bingo, bazinga, here you go. Anyway, oh, what do we got? We've got ourselves our handy little spice rack with all the Freedom Express emblazoning upon there. And every little nook and cranny they could, they opened things up. That actually used to be a place up there where you could uh, store the portable Coleman camp grill, but you don't need to do that anymore since they have their own griddle. And I love it. Not only is it the bigger camp kitchen with the bigger outside fridge, but it's mounted lower. So, you know, you can keep the barley pop, the bottled water, and then the hug barrels for the kids over here, you know? And then what you do is you keep the real, like, Coors Banquet, the whatever, over here for your Uncle Gary, who's just a moocher. <laughs> Now, um, you know, again, a little storage cabinet space. I love how they're really dialing everything in. A real sink with a real drain. And the one thing you haven't seen so far is something that I love in all of the Freedom Expresses, the utensil drawer. But they didn't forget it. Just with the shape of the kitchen on the inside, they didn't have a place for it. That is, hands down, the best use of space under an RV sink ever. And that is a real sink, by the way. Uh, if you, uh, you know, peek your way back there, you can see there are actual like drains going into a holding tank. It is not just a, uh, what am I wanting to say? Just dog dish that you flip on the ground. Um, it's, it's a little bit icy. I'm gonna try to be careful. It's not too bad. And I think I can get you around that fully walkable roof up there. Let's see what we get. I think we're gonna be okay. Not too bad up here, just a little wet. And hey, RV roofing is wet when you're cleaning it anyway, so no big deal. We are roof solar ready, standard now, which is a cool thing. Obviously, it's walkable because I'm all over the place up here. It is built for snow loads and it actually has an aluminum perimeter so that the roof matches up better with the sidewalls, which is cool. The antenna can be upgraded to an LTE kind of Wi-Fi hotspot sort of system. They are also including roof attic vents so that if you're camping in the scorching hot sun, the roof can breathe. That way the roof isn't basically turning into a Dutch oven and burning you from the scalp down, which is not how I lost most of my hair, but it would be a better story than male pattern baldness. And real talk, if you get this camper and your kids don't want to come along, you call me because I would be perfectly happy hanging back in that bunker all day. Got my own little bathroom, I'll bring my own entertainment. Uh, I, I might even bring my own food. I also might sneak out into your big 12-volt fridge here and snack on some things in the middle of the night like a fridge goblin, but never mind that. 
If you have any questions, uh, any comments, l- let me know. Leave me some comments. Tell me some things that you like. Let me know, is there something that you dislike or do you have a question about? Maybe I can help clarify that for you. Or perhaps at least shed some perspective, anything like that. Um, or if this is close but not exactly what you're looking for, paint me a picture. Now I'll, I'll shoot you a couple links to some things that might fit you a little bit better. So as always, remember... We don't do hidden fees at Halo RV, but we do just about everything else. So click that little subscribe button, follow along, and remember we got all kinds of good things coming for you here at Halo RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.